So, welcome back to the Woodland Escape. As you can see, we've made some progress. Um, I know I'm making progress because now it's easier to go through the doorway than it is to step over the logs. So we're working with cedar, which is a very rot resistant wood. It's very soft to work with. Uh, on the downside, it has a lot of taper to it. So what I'm trying to do in order to keep the walls level as they go up is alternate the, the crown end from the butt end. So I alternate them as they go around. Because when I get up over the top of the door, and I probably will have one, perhaps two logs over the door, I want them as level as possible because I'm going to have to hew them flat like I hewed the floor joists. So to minimize my work, I use a stick basically, no tape measure of course, and I mark the four corners as I go up. I try to keep them within an inch or two of level. So yeah, we're going to um, put a notch in this one. Now, if you visualize um, the settlers in the early mid 1700s being dropped off in a bateau with a few tools that they owned stowed down below, they didn't have a lot. Um, it's a lot easier if, if one has uh, an assortment of tools, but we've got pretty much uh, a small assortment of tools to use to work with. So the notches are pretty crude. So we've built um, four log cabins now, and we've done ones that are very intricate with uh, compound dovetail notches, which are very accurate, hewed on the outside. The pioneers of that time uh, used primarily round logs. They didn't have neither the tools nor the time to hew the outsides of the logs and the inside of the log, I should say as well, uh, leaving the round in between. So they used round and they used what's called a round notch or commonly referred to as a saddle notch. So we're going to be uh, cutting a notch here. I'm going to show you how we do it without a scribe. So essentially what I'm trying to do, you can see I purposely left uh, a gap between the logs. Now with, th there is a method where one can notch them here and put a groove that runs longitudinally that will sit down and saddle this log, giving a real nice tight fit. But again, neither the tools nor the time to do that. So we're purposely leaving that gap. So when I lay the log that I'm going to notch to the corresponding log below, I'm using my fingers as a guide. Now I want to have about an inch, roughly an inch uh, gap, depending on the curve, they're not perfectly straight. So in, in this case, that's just about right. So using my knife, I can start at the top, basically put a mark in the log, move it along, put a mark in the log, put a mark in the log, till I get to the point where it's perpendicular with the sides. Once I've done that, I'm using a bit of sharpened charcoal here. I've got this one pretty much marked out. And I draw that, I basically join the dots with this piece of charcoal. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to um, use my log dogs to uh, fasten this and I'm going to put a series of cuts in this.
So the next step in this rather labor intensive uh, process is to, um, to basically use my curved chisel and, and I wanna follow this line that I've scribed with the charcoal on this side of the log and on the opposite side of the log. That'll give me a guide. Then essentially I, I remove the material in the middle and I should have a notch that's reasonably close to a fit. Um, I purposely make them a little small, so I'll enlarge it a bit after I test it on the log. So following my line, so I've got I've got my uh, sort of my guide uh, surface done on this side. I'm going to replicate that on the other side. Following the line, I've got it pretty much down on it. And then we just remove the material in the middle. And basically what I do is the bottom of the vertical cuts I made with the, with the saw are my guide for the material I want to take out of the bottom of the notch. Okay, let's see how it fits. I anticipate I'll have to take a little more out. Okay, so we're close. Um, Got to take a little bit more off in the entry points, and that should sit down there pretty good. should be pretty close. Let's see how we made it. Yep, I'm satisfied with that. So yeah, we're uh, we're just about uh, done for the day. We're losing our son. Uh, just talk about windows for a moment. Um, in the early to mid 1700s, glass was a very expensive, if not rare, item and obviously a very difficult item to transport. So cabins that were built, the, the initial cabin was built without any windows. They would often use rawhides. So in the tanning process of uh, brain tanning deer hides, for example, They'd stop before the tanning, once they'd done the membraning, the, the dehairing, the graining, and they'd scrape that down thin, and they'd get sort of a opaque finish, not clear, obviously, but they would often build openings in the log walls, and they'd tack in this rawhide uh, that would allow some light in the cabin, because it would have the open hearth fire, of course, it would have candles, uh, in a door opening, but aside from that, they were pretty dark inside. So one of the first, um, I guess one could call it renovations they would do, as more and more settlers would come into the area, uh, generally along rivers, and the rivers were the water power source for grist mills and sawmills, etc. They, um, they would have a, available glass to them and they would renovate their cabin and put in glass. And if you look at first person accounts, it was quite a joyous occasion when they first uh, put a window into their cabin. So we're gonna skip the uh, 
the waiting process and uh, and we're not going to renovate. We're going to actually put in three windows. So I've been restoring three windows. Two will go in the front, one on either side of the door, and one in the southwest wall, which is our prevailing winds, which will give us some airflow in the cabin. So I've been restoring these 100-year-old windows and it's been taking me forever, but uh, they're almost done. So a couple more logs, maybe one, perhaps two, and we'll be ready to put the, the window frames in. And we're doing that same as the door. Everything's going to get pegged in. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much done for the day. I'm going to start my fire and start cooking up. And tomorrow we'll go out. I'm going to put a couple of logs up, uh, get ready for the morning.